My name is Dan Barry. I've been in space a few times, had three flights and four spacewalks and a couple trips to the International Space Station. And now, mostly, I build robots. I'm interested in finding ways to, to, to build machines that can think for themselves. I think that building an artificial intelligence isn't going to be replicating the human brain. Forget that. We have enough human brains. I have no interest in replicating the human brain. I want to bring, effectively, an alien intelligence to the table. Something that thinks very differently than we do to help us understand what the basis of the way we think is. I think everyone would, would like to meet an alien, right? I mean, we all look to the stars and wonder if there's other intelligent life out there. It would be fascinating to, to meet someone with this completely different perspective of the world. And we have some of those in our own environment because we can meet the dolphins and the chimpanzees. I think a dog is a great example of this incredibly high emotional intelligence, the ability to empathize and relate and understand and, and perceive the emotions and the feelings in us that a dog has and then reacts to is spectacular. That's a different type of intelligence. And yet we have such difficulty really communicating with the animals. If we build an artificial intelligence, I think we'll get just as alien a perspective, a very different point of view. But this time we're gonna build it so we can talk to it. So we can actually start to get into a different way of thinking and from that, understand our own thinking in a much deeper way. So the question is, you want to build an artificial intelligence, something that's really smart, that can, that can help you make decisions about the world and can know that it exists. So where do you begin? Most people say, let's begin by making this very logical thing. It can make decisions, it can identify objects, it can solve puzzles. And I would suggest to you that while that might produce an interesting thing, I think it's going to be hard for that approach to build a creature that understands it exists and can relate to the world in a way that we would call intelligent. Because what we call intelligence and think of as intellect has all these underlays of emotion and perception and movement. Most people think of intellect as the place to start. And I, I would suggest that intellect is the place you end up. Brains exist for us to move and perceive. That's the beginnings. The creatures that, that don't move don't have brains. In fact, there's creatures that are as larvae run around and do stuff, and when they become an adult, the sea, the sea squirt's the example, doesn't move anymore. First thing it does is it eats its brain. So that's the basis of, of a brain. So you start with movement, and then you get perception that allows you to have purposeful movement. And then you start to integrate those perceptions, which is actually what we call emotion. It's an integration of perceptions that makes me modulate my movement. So, for example, if, if something's tapping me repeatedly, I can remember that and stop reacting to every one. But if something suddenly comes along and, and jumps out at me, I want to react to that. And so we feel these emotions of, you know, boredom, I would call, uh, fear, anxiety, it changes the way we kind of react to situations. And that's all needs to be there before you get intellect. Because what intellect does is kind of throttle that, that whole state. And so someone who says, I'm gonna build an intellect, who doesn't do motion, perception, emotion, is gonna have a really hard time creating something that knows it exists.